Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. Now, today's product needs no introduction at all. I've been asked about it every single day since that very interesting online launch event last month. It is the Jackery Explorer 1500 Solar, Solar Generator, Generator, and that's actually what they call it. Now, we already know this is going to be good, but the real question is, how good? Let's find out. So what's in the box? Well, it's, it's actually a bag. As if you know anything about Jackery products, they always give you a bag of goodies. This one has the AC wall charger brick, which this thing's pretty darn heavy. And they give you the 12 volt cable. That's really it, that's all that's in the bag. Of course, they give you a user manual and it says you get one of these, but however, they sent me two and they were both in the box when they sent it to me. So these are, they call them parallel adapters, but I have my doubts that they actually do parallel and I'll explain that later. And then they also give you this adapter. It's an eight millimeter adapter. It has a thin pin, eight millimeter on one side and a thicker pin, eight millimeter on the other. And I'm sure there's measurements for that. I'll have to look those up and put them at the bottom of the screen for those of you that actually care about these things. But let's take a look at the manual. Now I was totally wrong calling this a user manual. Obviously this is for user manual. So I think manual, um, you lost your book. Let's see right here it says solar panel parallel cable and they only include one, but I got two in my box, and that would be for four solar panels, and they do sell a four solar panel kit. Register now to get an extra 12-month warranty. So yes, for those of you that don't know, if you register your Jackery product, they extend the warranty from two years to three years, which is pretty awesome. They give you some basic information. They tell you how to charge it with solar, which is pretty straightforward. They do actually tell you in the book now how to reset. Now, this has been a long time thing you can do with Jackery. If you hold down the display button, for 13 seconds, it will actually reset the battery monitor in there, so it will basically readjust itself if it's out of whack. Now it says here, the Explorer 1500 uses an intelligent temperature control. When an AC is turned on, the fan does not turn on. Only when the temperature rises to a certain degree, then the fans turn on. I want you to remember this, okay? And for those of you that ask how long can it power certain things, here you go. And that's all Manuel wrote. Okay, battery capacity. This sports a 1488 lithium ion battery using Panasonic NMC cells with an 800 cycle life to 80% capacity. Yeah, say that 10 times fast. So 80% capacity for those of you new to the channel means that you don't throw this away after 800 cycles. It loses the top 20% of the battery. You can still continue to use it for many years with the remaining capacity of the battery. Now they do claim an eight year battery life based on the average use case. As for size and weight, it's approximately 14 inches long by 13 inches wide by 10 inches high at only 32.3 pounds as weighed in the lab. As for build quality, this is ABS plastic all the way around. It does have the Jackery rubberized orange feet and the typical big honking handle. The Jackery Explorer 1500 and 2000 has this nice new blingy color display that not only shows the battery percentage, but shows it with this cool little spinny circle thing that's guaranteed to drive your cat's nuts. It also shows the input and output watts and as well as the charge and discharge times. Now this is a first for Jackery and puts this display at the top of its class compared to competitors. Something else brand new for the Jackery is an 1800 watt pure sine inverter with a 3600 watt peak and that's through three 20 amp AC outlets. This is the first time that Jackery has ever exceeded 15 amps, which is better late than never. As for MPPT, this actually has two inputs on it. So these are independent simultaneous charging ports that are both eight millimeter. They are both MPPT controllers. So you can have different voltages coming into each one of these ports. Now I'll go into this in detail in a bit. As for ways to charge, of course you can charge some AC wall outlet with this big honking brick expect about five and a half hours to charge it from dead. Now this does support dual independent charging. So you can buy a second one of these 
power bricks, plug it into the second input, and cut those numbers in half. Now, each one of the MPPT controllers supports up to 300 watts of charging, so you can actually run 600 watts of solar into this, up to 52 volts. Again, a first for Jackery to finally allow solar panels in series. Now at max solar, you can expect a charge from dead in around three hours, which is exceptional again for Jackery. And of course, the Jackery can also charge from a 12 volt car with the included adapter, and that takes about 15 hours. And as for 12 volt output types, the Jackery only includes a single 12 volt output, and that's the cigarette lighter adapter that is regulated at 13 volts, and it's good for 10 amps. Oddly, they don't offer any 5.5 millimeter or 6 millimeter outputs like they do on pretty much all their other power stations. As for USB output types on the 1500, you get a single 60 watt unidirectional power delivery port. You cannot charge through this port as output only. They do offer a single 18 watt quick charge port and a single Jurassic USB-A port. And don't forget the most important and most amazing feature on this 32 pound device, and that is this one watt flashlight. So of course I took the Jackery Explorer 1500 into my secret laboratory and performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it. So let's go ahead and enjoy one more double fisted bang, bang. capacity test. As you can see, the results of the AC capacity test was 1,230 watt hours out of 1,488 watt hours, or 83%, which is about average for the industry. Now, DC capacity was only 1,182 watt hours out of 1,488, or 79%, which is slightly below average and kind of very surprising to me for Jackery because they almost always excel on this test in the upper 80s or lower 90s. So I always do this test at eight amps or around 100 watts for all solar generators to keep the results consistent between models. So it's not my testing that's the question here. Either the 12 volt regulation circuitry is using more power than normal or there's something else inside of this that's using extra power that they don't have in older Jackery models. There could also be an issue with the Panasonic batteries because it did change battery brands in the Jackery to extend the life. So maybe they traded overall capacity of these batteries for overall life cycles. I really don't know. So Jackery became famous for its regulated 12 volt output. Back in the day, back when the dinosaurs were roaming in 2019, pretty much nobody had 12 volt outputs that were regulated except for Jackery. And there were maybe one or two other brands, but Jackery was the most famous. So we're gonna go ahead and look and see. How much power can we get out of it? Now this is rated at 10 amps, so we should be able to get somewhere around 120 watts. It is regulated at 13.0 volts. So let's go ahead and crank up the amps. Okay, we're right at 10 amps. It says 130 watts output on the Jackery, and it says 125 watts output there. So how far can we push it? I'm expecting not very far. Right at 10 and a half amps, it, it gives up. So 10 amps is what you get out of the 10 amp port. That's good. As for the max charge rate test, this was kind of fun. We got to actually try out these brand new dual MPPT inputs on the Jackery. Now I've noticed some Jackeries you can push beyond the limits and some you can't. This is a completely new design, so I'm not really sure what I'm gonna find, but this does have two inputs on it, and that's the only inputs on this. There's no Anderson, they, take, they took the Anderson away. Most of my cables have this small pin inside. Jackery is requiring a thick, a thicker pin in the middle. So they actually include in the box this adapter, which takes the eight millimeter with the thin pin and makes it a thicker pin. And we're gonna go ahead and plug this in after I show you my setup here and what we're doing, because it's a little bit different than normal. So what I have here is the 1800 watt power supply that I used for the Blue Eddy EP500 test. This puts out 48 volts at 37 amps, I think, to give you 1800 watts. I have that going into this voltage converter, so it takes the 48 volts out of this, turns it into up to 100 volts over here. 
Now, since this voltage booster does not have a display on it, I do have this display hooked up so we can actually see how many volts and amps and watts are coming in. On the bottom of the Jackery, it says it supports 12 volts to 51 volts, up to 300 watts on each input. I wasn't really clear. It said 300 watts and then doubled. And I'm like, well, why don't they just say 600 watts? But the reason why they say that, I found out, this Jackery is different than any other Jackery ever made. Now we currently have the voltage set to 52 volts. This seems to be the maximum that the Jackery will take. My charger can easily pump 1800 watts. Okay, so don't blame my charger. My charger can put out way more than this could ever take. Let's go ahead and plug this in. This is 52 volts. This is basically pretend solar. Okay, so we're pretending that we have 52 volts of solar coming in at 1800 watts. You can see right here, we're actually pumping in 310 watts into the Jackery. Now, if this is a 600 watt input, it would say 600 right now. But since each one of these are limited to 300 watts, to give you your total 600, you have to actually plug a second source in. So this is way different than any other Jackery. All the Jackeries in the past, if they've had two inputs on them, they were shared. That means you couldn't plug two things in at once and basically double your speed. So you put 300 from any source on one side and then 300 from any source on the other side. So one source could be 12 volt from your car, it could be solar, it could be the wall charger. Okay, so here's the AC wall charger. I can plug that in. It doesn't matter the voltages are different. These are two completely separate inputs and I know this because I can hear it click. I don't think I'll be able to have you guys pick this up, but let me see if I can show you. But look, we're doing 600 watts of charging right now. Let me put my microphone right up against this. Maybe you'll hear the click. It's very, very, very quiet. I don't know if you heard that. I could barely hear it myself. But that tells me there's a relay on each one of these inputs. So they basically have two MPPT controllers in this. That's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like to me they have two completely separate inputs with two different MPPT chargers in it. That's super cool. Part two of the max charge rate test. I now have my variable voltage charger. This allows me to go from like basically zero up to about 51 volts. This is a 600 watt charger, so it's more than enough for this. And right now we have it at 12.4 volts. The Jackery is charging at 97 watts. That's typical. So let's go ahead and up the voltage and see what we get. So up here are the watts coming in and down here are the volts going in. So let's go ahead and increase the voltage and see what we get. Now this is a lead acid battery at rest, 12.4 volts, so as you can see, charging at 94 watts, no problem. Okay, a typical running vehicle at 13.6 volts puts about 110 watts into the Jackery. Again, this is no surprise. We're now 14.4 volts. This is what you could expect from a fully charged lead acid battery system. Again, the wattage hasn't changed that much, so let's bump it up to minimum solar panel voltage. Okay, we now changed it to low end solar panel voltage and something very interesting happened. The wattage dropped. So let's repeat that. Let's go down to 12 volts. So right here, there's a little interesting symbol. It looks like a little 12 volt thing with a USB on it that you'd plug into a cigarette lighter. So I guess it knows it's being charged by a cigarette lighter. Okay, let's go up again. Let's go ahead and put it up to solar panel voltage. You notice that little icon changed. There it is. So it knows when it's in 12 volt car charge mode and it actually provides a little bit more wattage, but then once it switches over to solar and then it actually changes the input wattage, it's actually lower than it was before, which is very interesting. Okay, let's bump it up to high solar panel voltage. So 12 volt solar panel usually puts out somewhere around 22, 23 volts. So we're gonna have to assume this is a very large solar panel, say two or 300 watts at 23 volts. It's still only gonna input 130 watts, which really surprises me. I would think the MPPT controller on this would really bump up and allow more wattage, but okay, let's keep going. 24 volts is usually about the top of the line 12 volt solar panel, yeah, we're only getting about 140 watts. So let's go ahead now and put two solar panels in series, which is gonna be about 48 volts. Now we already know that it's gonna take 300 watts because I just demonstrated that a moment ago. So 280, 285 watts at 48 volts. To max this out all the way, this is as high as it goes, 51.3, and we're up to 303 watts. So that's some very interesting results. And by the way, when I exceed 52 volts on the input, it just shuts off. So I tried 53, 54 volts, it just goes 
it just goes down to zero. So if you exceed the voltage on one of these inputs, it just will not work. It just stops charging. So that is the upper limit, 52 volts. The nice thing about having a 52 volt upper limit means you can actually use some pretty big solar panels on this. You could actually grab a pair of 180 watt Bouge RV panels and put them in series and charge this. Or a pair of 200 watt rich solar panels. I think that's still going to be under 52 volts VOC. That would max out that 300 watt input. Because remember, you can always over panel, but you can't over volt. As for the USB output rate check, there's nothing to see here. These are just basic old school USBs. So there was really no point in spending any time showing you those tests. But they do put out what they say they're supposed to put out. And here's the moment you have all been waiting for, a little solar degenerator time. For those of you that don't know what a solar degenerator is, this is this heat gun, which has destroyed more inverters than there are stars in the sky. Okay, that's a slight exaggeration, but it certainly feels that way every time I blow up another inverter with this thing. Now, I'm very positive I'm not going to blow up this inverter. Jackery's inverters are some of the best on the market. They're extremely safe. I wouldn't expect smoke to come pouring out of this if I turn it up too high. So let's go ahead and start with the pure sine wave check under load. You can see under no load, we have 109 volts at about 60 hertz. You can see there the sine wave looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and apply some dirty load giggity, giggity, giggity. and see what the sine wave does. Looks good, the voltage has not budged. It looks exactly the same. So we have a pretty good inverter here. Now you're gonna notice that the fan on this thing runs quite a bit. You can hear it in the background. Now. It's not really the most pleasant sound ever. It does sound like a computer fan. It is running somewhat loud. Let me see if I can get a decibel meter on it. About 56 decibels. So the fan on the Jackery is certainly audible. You can hear it on the other side of the room. It's not the worst fan I've heard, but it's definitely not the best Jackery fan I've heard, no. That's the kind of sound you can expect coming out of the fan. Now, just shut off. And of course, when it shuts off, it's completely quiet. Now, what Jackery says in his documentation is that it's a smart fan. It's only going to kick on over a certain load. So let's test that theory. I have my solar degenerator. We're going to put it on low with no heat. Well, it kicked on immediately. So I guess it doesn't matter what the load is because that was about 100 watts. As soon as I kicked 100 watts, the fan came on. So just expect anytime you run the inverter on this, you're going to get the fan. Okay, let's go ahead and do the inverter capacity test. I have this 1500 watt heater from Amazon. I'm going to go ahead and kick it on full blast. It's still ticking. 1130, 1150, 1160. It's going up slowly. Okay, so we got the heater on the floor running at maximum. Output says 1300 watts. Let's add some solar degenerator. Okay, so let me go ahead and turn this and apply power. Let's see just how hard we can push this inverter. Now, this is an 1800 watt inverter. So there we are, we're at 1900 watts. Seems like it's all right, so just can keep pushing it. We're at 2000 watts, 21, 22, 23, 24. That's it, that's all I can do. The solar degenerator is at maximum. So that's a first. I'm able to push 2,400 watts out of this 1,800 watt inverter. I'm wondering how long it's going to run. A few moments later. Oh, well, it's a heck of an inverter, guys. 2,400 watts and we're still going. It's been, oh, there we go, finally. So let's go ahead and do that test again. And this time I'm going to put it to about 2,000 watts and see how long it takes to shut down. Let's see how long she will run at 2,000 watts. Okay, this test is taking so long, it's been at least three minutes, and the Jackery is still handling 2,000 watts like a champ. So we're gonna just let it go at least five minutes and see what happens. Okay, well, we got five minutes, guys. Let's go ahead and crank it up a little bit more. Let's see if it can handle 2,100 watts. There we are, we're at 2,100 watts. Let's see how long it can go. Well, <laughs> We gotta keep increasing it until it's gotta overheat eventually. Oh, there we go, finally. Oh, this is interesting. It's got a second fan inside. I can hear it spinning up. 
Yeah, that second fan really makes it a lot louder. So with the second fan going, it's almost 59 decibels. The results of the inverter capacity test show that the Jackery Explorer 1500 has an excellent state-of-the-art inverter in it. You can pull 1800 watts all day long without any sweat. In fact, I was able to pull 2000 watts for at least five minutes. It probably went even longer than that. And I was able to pull 2100 watts for over three minutes before the inverter finally shut down. Now, I was able to pull 2600 watts for several seconds, which is kind of a record for an 1800 watt inverter. Now, Jackery did send me four 100 watt solar panels to test with this, so I drug it outside and I put it up with four solar panels to give you guys an idea of what you can expect. Now, do note that two of the solar panels I have are new and two of the solar panels I have are old, so it's not really putting out as much as it should be if they were four brand new version three solar saga panels. Now, that one in the far back corner is an older version two panel. These shinier ones the other three are the version three panels. They're supposed to output a little bit more. So let's see what happens. We have all four panels hooked up using these little boxes. These little boxes that you get from Jackery, they put the solar panels in series. So the front two solar panels are going into this box, being put into series, plugged into one side of the Jackery input, and then these other two solar panels in the back are also connected in series with another box going to input number two. So let's see what kind of wattage we're getting today. So there you go. We're getting about 300 watts out of the 400 watts worth of panels. I want you to take note of something very interesting. I only have the two front solar panels, the brand new version three solar saga panels plug in up front. I'm getting 170 watts combined. Let's plug in the two older panels in the back and see what we get. So I now have the two older panels, the older Jackery panels, and they're only putting out 100 watts. That's very interesting. I wonder why that is. Maybe it's because they're different technology or just because they're aged. Now this is a version three panel, but it's the sort of like the beta model. And then that is one of the old version two panels that I've beat the crap out of. I've actually been using that quite a bit over the last year or so. So it's certainly got its use. These two up front are brand new. These are brand new version three panels that Jackery just sent me. So apparently they did something with these new panels to make them a little more powerful. So I'm getting significantly more power out of these new Jackery panels than from the old Jackery panels. So what do I like about this new Jackery Explorer 1500 that everybody's been waiting for for the past year? Well, obviously the class leading feature of this product is definitely that amazing inverter. Jackery really nailed it out of the park with this 1800 watt monstrosity that is certainly underrated. It seems to run effortlessly at 2000 watts and it's the first inverter to ever take my electric heater and the solar degenerator simultaneously at maximum settings without instantly shutting down. So good job Jackery, word to your motherboard. So what does this mean for you? This means that for the first time in history Jackery finally has a product on the market that can run the majority of your household appliances. Everything from your residential full-size refrigerator to your deep freezer to an eight to 10,000 BTU air conditioner and even the largest microwaves. It can run all these things without overloading. So what else do I find exceptional about the Explorer 1500? It has to be these dual MPPT inputs. These things are really cool. So kudos again to Jackery for finally giving us what we want and that is faster charging and dual charging. Do you want a dual car charge? Sure. Do you want to charge some solar and your car at the same time? You got that covered. How about loading both with pairs of 200 watt solar panels to max out the 600 watts of solar? Done deal. Last but not least is that Jackery still managed to make this 1500 watt behemoth with massive 1800 watt inverter one hand portable with a larger battery and frankly a better inverter than the EcoFlow Delta, which is also a product you can pick up with one hand, this is the new king of the ultra portable power hill. So what don't I like about the new Explorer 1500? Well, by far the biggest letdown has to be the major lack of state-of-the-art USB ports and the single 12 volt output. Most of the people buying this product are gonna be buying it for its ultra portability and will likely use it heavily for charging USB devices like high-end phones, tablets, laptops, running 12 volt fridges, CPAP machines, 
and using LED lights to shine on their movie projector or groom their man bun. The fact it only offers a single 60 watt power delivery port and it's only unidirectional and one wimpy 18 watt QC port with a practically useless and 2021 USB-A port, it's rather shocking. There are no 5.5 or 6 millimeter 12 volt outputs on this for running LED lights or your CPAP machine from 12 volts. So you're going to be forced to run it from the inverter for the most part, and that's going to waste a bunch of power. Now, if you want to charge a high end laptop like a MacBook that requires a 100 watt power delivery port, forget it. Whip out that wall charger, you're going to have to again use the inverter, which is going to waste a bunch of power. The downside to having such a large inverter and a small box like this is that while it's on, it's wasting a significant amount of power. If you're plugging in a little 10 watt LED light or something into this inverter, it's just going to chew through the battery on this, where that wouldn't even be the case. It would be not a concern at all if they had a 12 volt output for it. But you got one cigarette lighter output on this, and that's all you get. That's that's it for the 12 volt outputs, which is very shocking. What else was very shocking was that their latest product, the Explorer 300, has a bi-directional USB-C port. They didn't even put that technology in here. This is just a unidirectional 60 watt port. It's just mind blowing that they didn't include that technology in their latest product. And that product was introduced like a year ago. No, I thought maybe at first they were holding out and they were gonna put all these features in their flagship model, the Jackery 2000, but I went on their website and I looked at it. It's the same as this. It's like the same exact layout, except it's got an extra AC outlet on it. The fact that a $300 model from a year ago has better USB on it than a brand new $2,000 model is technical insanity to say the least. Last and certainly least, which is definitely just a minor gripe on my part, is the noise. I get it that this is an ultra portable with a huge honking inverter, so it needs a lot of active cooling. But these smart fans don't seem all that smart. As soon as I apply any real load to the inverter, the first set of fans kick on. While they aren't loud, they could be problematic if they're using this in a quiet environment, like say you have this plugged in during a blackout and you're trying to watch TV. Well, the fans running might get annoying. Now, I don't think this is gonna be a problem for most. It's likely the appliance that you're running that's taking all this power probably has its own fans in it, and it's gonna be a lot louder than this, so you won't even notice this in the background. However, it's something to keep in mind if you're a previous Jackery owner and you're used to like sort of a quieter model. This is definitely the loudest Jackery I've ever heard. So you'll just wanna be prepared for that. Like I said, it's not super loud or super annoying, but it's louder than I'm used to a Jackery being. Now, if you're coming from EcoFlow or another brand that has these super loud PC style fans in it, this is gonna seem like a whisper in the library. Product price. So if you're watching this on launch day, the day this video comes out, the Jackery Explorer 1500 comes to the market today available for purchase. The introductory launch day price of this product is only $1439, which is on par with typical Jackery pricing, which is usually about a dollar per watt hour. Now the retail price after the introductory price period, this is going to jump up to $15.99, which doesn't make it as good of a deal. Now because people are going to be watching this video for the next year, I do need to make it clear that quoted prices and discounts are going to change over time. Don't expect this $14.39 deal to last for very long. Jackery is not known for having long sales. They'll have a coupon code for a week and pull it, then they won't have anything for three months. So just be aware of this. If you really want to get this product at $14.39, you should probably jump on it and likely it's going to sell out. Every single Jackery launch, the product is usually sold out within the, the first day or two. So if you want to get on the bandwagon, don't hesitate to get this product at the current introductory price. Prices are going to change over time. So if you come back and watch this video a week, month, or year later, don't expect the price to be $14.39. Now you can subscribe to the channel to be notified whenever I do an update video and I usually let you know there's a sale. You can also subscribe to our email list by going to hobotech.tv slash blog and putting in your email address. Or you can join our Facebook group called the Hobo Tech Crew where we discuss products like this long before I even do the videos. And by subscribing to my blog, or the Facebook group, you'll pretty much be the first one to know about these awesome deals when they launch and you won't be left in the dark. Remember the old phrase, the early bird gets the SoGen. It totally applies when it comes to Jackery launches. So what about the competition? Well, at this price point, there's actually quite a bit. The heavier, 
but longer life Blue 80 AC200P matches the Jackery's retail price. And the EcoFlow Delta, while aging gracefully, offers similar features and faster AC charging for a little bit less. It all comes down to the phrase that I use all the time when people ask me what SoGen is best for them. And that is, it depends on your needs. I have reviews on many competing products, so just check out my product review playlist and make that decision for yourself. So who is this product aimed at? Jackery is wholly focused on being the most portable power out there. Even their motto, Power Outdoors, tells you who they're marketing their products to, the outdoors crowd. They've even been bragging about how their new solar panels are finally waterproof. Now, Jackery doesn't tout themselves as backup power for your home, although this and the Jackery 2000 can both do that. If weight and portability is ultra important to your application, then there's nothing better or more reliable than a Jackery, period. So what can the Jackery power? It can power anything that you would plug into a household wall outlet up to 1800 watts. That's practically anything. Examples could be coffee machines, instant pots, rice cookers, crock pots, induction cookers, gaming or graphic arts computers, full-size refrigerators, freezers, 10,000 BTU air conditioners, pellet stoves, electric heaters, hair dryers on full, yes ladies, microwave ovens, any size television, electric blankets, household fans, it list goes on and on. Runtime varies per device. If you want to know how long it's going to run, take the usable watt hours, as I showed earlier in this video during the discharge test, and divide it by the number of watts that your device takes, and that gives you the number of hours it will run. Now, solar panels, what is recommended for this product? Now, I highly recommend the Jackery 100 watt or 200 watt solar panels for this application, and that's as many as you can manage. With this launch, they're actually offering the 1500 solar generator, which is this with four 100 watt panels at a discount. I'll have the link to that below in the description. Anyone buying this product is likely using it outdoors or in a situation where portability, quick setup and teardown is important. Also, Jackery claims a power boost by using their panels instead of the competition. And I showed that test earlier, it seems to be true. They do use top-notch SunPower brand cells in their solar panels, and they're really worth that premium. I have a separate video on their latest 100 watt panel if you're interested in seeing the breakdown of that. And I'm still waiting to get their 200 watt panel. As soon as I get that, I'll do a video on it. Now I do have the links to both the 100 and 200 watt solar panels in the description below if you don't want to buy their package deal. Now if you don't need ultra portable panels, you want to save a few bucks, you want something you can keep outside in any kind of weather conditions, I have many more less expensive options on hobotech.tv slash Amazon. Click on solar kit. Hits. It takes you all the way down to the section with all the solar panels. If you're looking for something bigger, more rigid, but still portable, there's some options there on my website. If not, again, if you need something ultra portable, go for the Jackery panels. So if you're interested in the Jackery Explorer 1500 solar generator, links are in the description of this video below. You can go down there. I'll have just this Jackery Explorer 1500. I also have the bundle with the four 100 watt Jackery panels and links to those other solar panels which I mentioned before. The coupons they are offering, discounts on this and the package are for a limited time only. And like I said before, every single Jackery launch I've been a part of has sold out within 48 hours. So I don't expect this to be around in the next two days. If you want one, you should jump on it right away without any hesitation because when they go out of stock, they might not be back for a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Hey, Odin. What do you think about the new Explore 1500? Yeah, that's what I thought. RV Golf Guy, Don Fula, F Medic Audio Repair, Andrew Vaughn Rob, Richard Cardano.